Hi, this is Tim. Today we're gonna to expand on the series parallel wiring exercise we did in the last video to start understanding why the lights are so much brighter when they're parallel compared to series. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. But in our last video, we went through wiring these two schematics right here. And the lights were intensely bright on the parallel compared to the series. So now we want to look a little closer and see if we can understand why. So first, let's flip this around and do a little recap. So right now, our lights are in the series position. Also, if you're like, hey, what's going on with that switch? Why is he able to flip it and do it? In the end, I made this circuit so that I could flip between the series wiring and the parallel wiring. And it was mainly for this video so that we could quickly go back and forth between them. But so we're in the series position right now and we're on, we have our voltmeter on volts DC. And when I check light one, I'm showing 5.8 volt. Light two, 9.1 and light three is 8.9. Now, when I flip my magical switch to make it parallel, then we have 24 volt, 24 volt, and 24 volt. And then that is what's making the difference in the intensity. But why do we have those lower voltage readings when we have this wired in series? And so that's what we're gonna walk through in this video. And we're mainly gonna use the Ohm's Law pie chart that we have used so much in our videos to take our nodes and figure out our own nodes. So while the lights are very easy to see, we need something a little more precision to work with for this video for a little bit. So I have three 100 ohm resistors to replace our lights. And we're gonna start off with just one of them. And I'm gonna put it on to the plus 24 volt of our power supply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the amps with our meter. Now I have a video that shows how to measure amps with your meter. So I'll put it in the description if you need help with it. Because in this case, we wanna use the 10 amp setting, not the milliamp setting. You will blow the fuse in your meter if you use the wrong setting here. But before we even do that, let's look at our Ohm's Law pie chart and see if what we can figure out. And just like always at this, we need two knowns to figure out anything else on it. So we know that we have a 24 volt power supply. And actually we're not even gonna put the switch in in this one and we have a 100 ohm resistor. So our nodes are voltage and resistance. And in this chart, voltage is E and resistance is R. So we can find our amps and our power. And for this one, we're gonna mainly find our amps. So we can believe what this meter is getting ready to tell us. So to find amps, we would take E, which is voltage, and divide it by R, which is resistance. So amps equals volts divided by resistance. We have 24 volt and we have 100 ohms. So we should show 0.24 amps. So I'm gonna switch my lead to the 10 amp position and we're gonna switch over to 10 amps and I will touch my zero volt to the black lead and then I will touch the other side of the resistor to my red and we have 0.24 volt. So there's how you can figure out your amps based off of your volts and your resistance. Now in our case, we had three resistors or three lights. First, let's go ahead and work our series one. So this is the same circuit as we were showing you here, just kind of laid out more in a circuit diagram fashion. So we have our power supply which I didn't label. There, now it looks better. So we have our 24 volt power supply. And in the case of our circuit, it was going up to switch one. With our resistors, we're not actually gonna add it. 
And then now we have 100 ohm resistor, 200 ohm resistors, and 300 ohm resistors. And this is to represent our three lights. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our resistor that we have here, and we're gonna twist another resistor on the end of it. And we're going to take another resistor and we're going to twist another one onto it. In the end, you should end up with this lovely looking circuit. We're gonna have a 100 ohm, twist it up to another 100 ohm, twist it up to another 100 ohm. So that takes care of our circuit up to this last leg. And as much as I tell you never to forget that last leg, you know, we're gonna forget it right now because we're gonna put our meter in line with it. But before we even do this, we're going to do a calculation and figure out what our amps should be. Now the issue is we have multiple resistors this time and our Ohm's Law pie chart only really accounts for one resistance. So we're going to figure out the total resistance of our circuit. And in the case of a series circuit, you simply add up all the resistances. So 100 Ohm plus 100 Ohm plus 100 Ohm is going to be 300 Ohm. So from there, then we can go back to our pie chart and plug in our voltage and our total resistance. So again, our total resistance is 100 plus 100 plus 100 for 300 ohm. Amps is gonna be volts divided by resistance. 24 volt divided by 300 is gonna be 0 0.08 amps. So we're gonna put our black lead in the zero volt. Now, when we measure our amps, we measure, well, it's showing 0 0.07. And chances are that's between the precision of this resistor and the precision of our meter. But hey, okay, we can measure our resistance. We know how to do that, don't we? So let's go down to the 2K scale because that's gonna be the closest to 300 ohm. And let's touch between one side of one of our resistors and the far side of our other resistor. Oh, and I just did it. Did y'all catch it? Much as I warned you about making sure your poster in the right place, I just didn't. So four ohms, our red post needs to be in the middle position. And now we can check our resistance and we're gonna come up with 294 ohms. So there you have it. Without actually using our meter, we were able to determine our total resistance and the amps that we would have. And that was a very long explanation to get to the point where we can really start talking about voltage dividers and why we have the lower voltages on our series circuit. So we know now our ohms, and we knew our voltage here across our power supply, but we didn't really know the voltage going through all this. But now we know our amps, and our amps is gonna be the same coming out of our power supply going through our switch it's going to go through this one through this one through this one and back so amps never changes in a circuit so if we have two amps coming out of our power supply we have to have two amps coming back into our power supply we have to have two amps going through this 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 and in our last one we figured out that our circuit has 0 0.08 amps. So now we can take our Ohm's Law equation again and figure out our voltage across each one of these resistors because now we know our Ohm's and our amps. So I is our amps, R is our resistance. I times R will end equal the voltage across the resistor. So here I've written it again, volts equals amps times resistance. And through our entire circuit, we have 0 0.08 amps times 100 ohms. That means we're gonna have eight volts across each one. So if I measure, in fact, I need to add a wire now because we're not gonna use our meter to measure current now. So I'm gonna add a wire to complete our lovely looking multi-resistor circuit here and we'll connect it to the zero volt, just to make sure you understand what our professional looking resistor circuit is now. We have a 100 ohm resistor into the plus 24 volt, connected to another 100 ohm resistor. Oop, that's kind of deceptive, get that wire out of the way. Oh. 
Then we have it connected to another 100 ohm resistor. And then we have a wire connected to it going back to our zero volt to complete our circuit. So it's exactly this circuit without the switch. I left the switch off. So if we check between the plus of our power supply and the far side of the first resistor, we have 7.9 volt. If we check between the left and the right of our middle resistor, we have 7.9 volt. And finally, if we check between the left and right of the last resistor, we have 7.9 volt. But if we check across all three, we have 24 volt. So that is why we had roughly eight volt across each of these lights. Now I use the same values in this and it just occurred to me that may make you not realize that you can use different ohm values for it. But let's just say you had a 50 ohm, 100 ohm, and a 150 ohm. And the main reason I'm using those values is still in that case, we'd have 300 ohm total. We'd have 0.08 amps just to make life easy. You still can plug it in. If the resistance of number one is 50 ohm and you had 0.08 amps, you're gonna have four volt on that first one. Uh, if number two was 100, you'd have the eight volt. And if number three was 150, you'd have 12 volts. So there is the basics of how to figure out your voltage across each of your loads in a series circuit. So now let's talk about the parallel circuit because it's pretty obvious that you do have 24 volt connecting to each one of them. But what is your resistance and what is your amps going through this circuit? So I'm gonna take our resistors back apart. Whoo, they got hot. We probably should talk about watts. No, this is a series in parallel. So let's save the watts for another day, but yeah. As resistors have current flowing through them, they build heat, and that would be a great video to do. Now let's take our resistors that we had, and let's just fold them together so they look like one resistor, and then just twist them together. And now we have three 100 ohm resistors in parallel. But what is its resistance? Well, first, here is our basic circuit redrawn so we have a 24 volt power supply and now they're going to be in parallel we're going to have three 100 ohm resistors and we do know that each one's going to have 24 volt at it but what if we need to know what our cumulative resistance is well to figure that it is one over the total resistance is going to equal one over r1 plus one over r2 plus one over r3 and you just keep adding them up. Now, one thing to make sure we're really aware of, because this seems to be a confusing point sometimes, is that this equation does not equal this equation. In fact, this is the series equation, and one over all of that is gonna be your parallel equation. So plugging our numbers in, we end up with one over RT, or resistance total, is gonna to equal one over 100 plus one over 100 plus one over 100. And that's gonna be one over RT is gonna equal three over 100. And then after that, we can do some quick cross multiplying, or you can just take me at my word on this, and you can send the RT up to with that three and that 100 up to with that one, which makes it three RT equals 100. And then we can divide by three to get that RT all by itself. And 100 divided by three is gonna be three. And I got an error there, guys. It's not three and a third ohms, where did my Sharpie go? It's 33 and a third ohm. 100 divided by three is gonna equal 33 and a third ohms. So now we'll take our meter, put it back on ohms, and we have our post in the right place, and we touch one side to one lead. We touch the other to the other lead. And yeah, we're right at 33.1 ohms. So there, now we have figured out our ohms without our meter. 
So now let's say we wanted to know how many amps is our circuit running. I didn't actually do one for this, I guess, but we can use the previous one and figure this out real quick. So volts divided by resistance is gonna equal amps. And so we have 24 volt and we're gonna divide it by 33.3. .3. And that means we should have about 0.72 amps going through this circuit. So I'm gonna plug our resistor back into the plus 24 volt, and that means getting all three of those crammed down in one terminal. We're gonna put our post back over on our 10 amp, and we're gonna switch up to our 10 amp. We're gonna put the black terminal to the zero volt, and we'll touch the other. And there you have it, we have 0.73. So there is some basic calculations for figuring out the relationship between volts, amps, and resistance in series and parallel circuits. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. I usually, I shouldn't say I steer away from equations, but I, I go for more practical troubleshooting usually. And in this case, we did have to pull a calculator out. Let me know if you thought it was helpful as far as building your troubleshooting skills. I do believe this is, a, actually, well, what I believe is important is this. I do believe it's important that you understand the Ohm's Law pie chart. So exercises like this are mainly to give you some opportunities to understand it a little more and do some calculations off of it because this right here is the basis of voltage drop, of how far you can run a wire off of so many amps. I mean, so many things are based off of this, but I do try to stay with those more practical topics that are gonna help you out in the field. So let me know what you thought of this video. Also, please make sure you hit that like button. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.